Despite its modest beginnings as a small fishing village, Dubai, the gold city, has evolved into an ultra-modern, impressive metropolitan city situated right in the heart of the Arabian Desert. Given that the temperatures are high enough to literally boil an egg on the sidewalk, who in their right mind would willingly want to live there? Well, we all know the answer. The Emiratis came up with a brilliant way to fix this problem. All they would have to do was transform the whole city into one big refrigerator. In this video, we'll examine how Dubai's harsh weather, massive development projects, an unquenchable desire for interior comfort have turned the city into a massive energy drain that mostly depends on air conditioning systems and contributes substantially to its carbon footprint. Before we begin with the chapters of this video, what do you think about Dubai's refrigerator situation? Let us know with some facts. First, let's address the obvious. Dubai's climate is serious business. Dubai, which is surrounded by the Arabian Desert, has one of the worst temperatures on the planet, making the Sahara seem like a refreshing breeze. Summer temperatures can reach over 50 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to make your car into a portable easy-bake oven. You may get the impression that you're swimming through the air even, with the high humidity levels. Even in the cooler winter months, highs of above 30 degrees Celsius are possible. The Dubai Meteorological Office reports that January, the coolest month, has an average maximum temperature of a comfortable 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. No wonder the residents of this area spend much of their time inside. Now, most rational people would say, yeah, maybe we should build somewhere a little more hospitable when they saw the weather in Dubai. However, the Emiratis thought otherwise. They had no intention of letting something as trivial as harsh climate deter them from creating the most opulent and extravagant buildings in human history. The ambitious vision and oil wealth of Dubai have propelled the construction boom, which in turn has increased the city's cooling requirements. Enormous cooling capacities are needed to keep residents and visitors comfortable in iconic buildings like the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building, because of course it is, and massive malls like the Dubai Mall, which has enormous indoor spaces and attractions like an actual ski slope. How then can you supply enough electricity for air conditioning to chill a city the size of Dubai? Dubai, which mainly uses fossil fuels, has had to make significant investments in its energy infrastructure. The UAE's fuel combustion-related carbon dioxide emissions exceeded 200 million tons in 2018, primarily from the cooling industry, according to the International Energy Agency. Huge amounts of oil and natural gas are burned in the city's power plants to produce the electricity required to run those air conditioners. And the result? This city has one of the highest carbon footprints per capita globally, mostly due to its large appetite for cooling and this has attributed significantly to greenhouse gas emissions and environmental degradation. Recognizing the unsustainability of traditional air conditioning systems, Dubai has begun implementing district cooling systems, which is a centralized and more efficient approach to cooling large-scale developments, and a fancy way of saying that they have built giant ice cube factories underneath the city. These systems distribute chilled water through underground pipes to multiple buildings, reducing the need for individual air conditioning units and improving overall energy efficiency. Based on a report by the Emirates Green Building Council, district cooling systems can use up to 1.5 liters of water per hour per ton of cooling capacity. The water consumption estimates are astounding because renowned complexes like downtown Dubai and the Dubai Mall are served by the city-state's extensive district cooling network. Additionally, the process of generating power requires water. The majority of Dubai's electricity comes from thermal power plants, which need a lot of water for steam production and cooling. According to a study that was written up in the journal Desalination and Water Treatment, these power plants in the United Arab Emirates use close to 40 billion gallons of water every year. 
Simply said, this type of use is unsustainable in a region where there is a severe water scarcity. Dubai's concern with cooling has a cascading effect on the environment because energy-intensive desalination plants provide the majority of its water demands. Dubai provides its citizens with a pleasant temperature, but at the expense of the ecosystem around them. Something positive, at least, is that the fish and birds won't have to worry about sweating through their scales and feathers. The Emiratis didn't settle for just building massive underground refrigerators. Alongside this, they started using smart cooling tricks in their new constructions, because nothing screams sustainable like living in a glorified cave. To tackle heat and boost airflow, they employed insulation, shading devices, and natural ventilation. Studies in the Renewable Energy Journal reveal that these passive cooling methods can slash a building's cooling energy use by up to 60%. Dubai is heavily investing in solar power and renewables to break free from fossil fuels and be more eco-friendly. According to the Dubai Clean Energy Strategy 2050, they aim for 75% of the city's energy to come from clean sources by 2050, with solar energy taking center stage. Makes sense, especially in the heart of a desert. However, the rise in demand might lead to more greenhouse gas emissions contributing to the cycle of global warming and escalating the need for cooling. Furthermore, Dubai has embraced smart grid technology to cut waste and maximize energy efficiency. These systems provide real-time energy monitoring and management, enabling improved load balancing and demand response, akin to having a personal energy coach to keep power consumption in check. Dubai's struggle with cooling has consequences that reach beyond energy and water. The city's constant construction and growth, driven by the desire for more air-conditioned spaces, have severely harmed the local environment. The famous Palm Islands, built by dredging tons of sand from the Persian Gulf, caused significant damage to marine habitats. This project, as reported by the World Wildlife Fund, resulted in erosion, pollution, loss of biodiversity, and harm to marine ecosystems. Moreover, the intense heat from Dubai's air conditioning and the urban heat island effect have negatively affected local wildlife. A study in the journal Urban Ecosystems revealed that cooling buildings in outdoor spaces has changed the behavior and migration patterns of various bird species in Dubai. Even though Dubai has made significant strides toward resolving its cooling problems, several problems still need to be solved. The consequences of climate change, combined with the city's continued growth and development, will likely cause demand for cooling to increase even higher. Both the public and commercial sectors will need to make significant upfront investments in the adoption of sustainable cooling systems. If Dubai's addiction to air conditioning isn't addressed right away, the city runs risk of being recognized as an example of unrestrained consumption and environmental neglect. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content.